guys. Fine. We hear you. We played Pal World. Eight million people are playing Pal World, and eight million people commented on our channel <laughs> that they want us to play Pal World. Because we both played Pal World, we thought it would be best if we both reviewed it, especially because we sort of have differing opinions. I grew up actually playing Pokemon, the original when it came out right here. It's right here. There was 151 Pokemon on there. Aww. Battery has not died yet, last time I checked. And I have been waiting for the Mario 64 of Pokemon games. And when Nintendo sort of finally gave us that with Pokemon Arceus, I was like, no, I didn't want it to look like Mario 64. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, Shelby's relationship to Pokemon is a little different. Yeah. I didn't play any of the games growing up. I did, however, watch the show, and I really liked that show. Mm -hmm. I liked it a lot. Save it for the bedroom. Sorry. But that's my relationship to Pokemon. I don't like to play the games. And this dynamic sort of led to an interesting gameplay experience for the two of us. Did you just catch my guy I worked on for 10 yeah. years? What Sorry. the hell? How dare. So without further ado, let's both review Pal World. As Pals. First, let's talk about what makes Pal World great and what we think attracted so many people to it. The guns. <laughs> I think it's the Pokemon. And make no mistake, they're, they're just it Pokemon. It is Pokemon. It, they're Pokemon. It's Pokemon. I mean, it's ridiculous. Every time there was a pal that resembled a Pokemon, I added it to my Rolodex here. Vixie, mama. Don't try to fool me. I know that you're Eevee. Tansy. Tansy was my good friend, Pansage. Oh, Pen King? Yeah, wait, which one is Pen King? King Dedede. <laughs> it's uh, my favorite Pokemon. So obviously there's a lot of similarities to Pokemon besides just the throwing circular objects at cute little monsters to catch them. It's a pal sphere, not a Pokeball. <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh, I can't yeah. believe they did that. So everything in the game kind of feels like that, where it's like very bottom shelf cereal brand. Wish.com. Like, instead of Frosted Flakes, it's- Forsted Farks. <laughs> <laughs> Every pal in this game is a Forsted Fark Pokemon. <laughs> now the accusations of plagiarism, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Leave it to the lawyers at Game Freak. And if they're anywhere near as incompetent as the people who make the games at Game Freak, then Power Roll will be just fine. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Woo, got him. All right, with that whole controversy out of the way, I like that it looks like Pokemon and you can kind of trick yourself and fantasize that you're playing a 3D open world, gotta catch them all Pokemon game. And I really think that's why this game hit it so big. Okay, but let's be real. There's a lot of Pokemon-esque ripoffs. I think we know what the real draw here is. It's what if we gave all of the pals a bunch of cocaine and automatic weapons and they said, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> oh, his face. That was a little spark of genius. Just enough to catch people's attention, which is sort of the unspoken horror of what's going on in real Pokemon games where you're you're enslaving these pets to fight each other. Yeah. And Power World is sort of making fun of that. It does feel a little bit like Pokemon Uncensored. Even in the character creator, you can make yourself look ridiculous. Yeah, well that's my favorite part. The size of the thighs. Oh my God, my ass when I swim is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Matt and I were like one Krabby Patty away from exploding. There was not a single moment in third person view where I did not have a raging <laughs> Oh my god! This was not your Christian mother's Pokemon game. What is your guy eating my ass for? No. Tell him to stop. <laughs> and he's making sounds. Not only can you murder the Pokemon, but you can eat them. And Matt made that very clear right away. Well, it said I was hungry and there was a chicken. So I did what any survivalist would do. I punched the chicken in the face. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Hey! Don't, don't hurt. Why are you always so mean to the chickens? And from there, the pals really developed into livestock. And then from the livestock aspect, it really just turned into slave labor Full sweatshop. Full blown assembly line sweatshop. <laughs> like having a little guy named Depresso slowly. The saddest man you've ever like seen. mining rock for us. And then also like, we'll be out on a little quest or something and I get a little pop up on the side of my screen that's just like, Depresso is not happy and and he's slacking off. You're like, what? And you get on the phone with the manager over there who's a squirrel. It's and, a lift monk named Cherry. Yeah, uh, and, and he's like, don't worry. As soon as you get back, I'm gonna get on your head and we're gonna kill these mother <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> my favorite part was just going out and discovering the world with you on our beautiful steeds. Oh my, oh my. 
Oh no. That's like the genuine Pokemon experience I've always wanted. To like look upon the horizon, which we did a few times, mm -hmm. watching the sunset and stuff. Yeah. And seeing like, what's that Pokemon out there? Holy moly. And then it's called a holy moly and you catch it. <laughs> and, and it looks just like Charizard. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that my favorite thing in the game is the eggs. I yeah. love finding eggs around the world and then incubating them and seeing what comes out. Yeah, I liked how no matter how many times I told Shelby she didn't need to sit on the eggs, she mm -hmm. would do it anyway. Hello, little baby, and a little egg. A baby baking the egg. And a little baby, my little egg. And he's gonna come out so nice. And then the reveal to your friend, you'd be like, all right, check this out. Yeah. Ba bam! Look at her go! She hatched like a giant warlord beetle god that immediately tried to kill me. And then there's a little jealousy involved. He's gonna be so. <laughs> It was always funny to be walking around camp and see some pal that Shelby had named and have a good giggle. I'm pretty proud of my Ithric deer. I named it Ellen Deer Generous. <laughs> That's a good one. She treats those trees like Ellen treated her employees. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't as good as my pun. I named my flack. That's not nice. <laughs> and the co-op experience is full of surprises and nuggets like that, showing off new things to each other. Here I come! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you like it? It's so cool. You like it? Suddenly I show up on a Gengar. I don't know what their names are. I'm just gonna say Pokemon names. <laughs> are you talking about your cat bus? Okay, now that we've talked about the things that we did like about that game, now we are going to tell you about the things that make it not that way because <laughs> all of those things are good but they are bad oh my god oh my there were times where this was so unbelievably janky it was hard to play what dude stop going to bed that's so annoying i'm throwing you at this my friend are you for real right now bro for example i said it's fun to craft new things and share it with your partner we Oh! Well, I was very excited to craft the grapple hook because mm -hmm. that's like the hottest thing in gaming of 2017. And I got it. Here we go. I'm going to show it off to Shelby. Neither of us have ever seen it. And this is what it looked like on my screen. Oh, -hoo -hoo. Whoa. oh yeah. <laughs> I'm a flag. And this is what it looked like on my screen. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Everything is like that. The crapple hook is a metaphor for almost everything you discover. That's the game. Sometimes your base will get raided. Ah! What the hell? Huh? Who? Ooh, the music kicks in and it's very and suspenseful. You're, what is and you're going like, on? What's, what's happening? Oh, we gotta defend our base. It's the first time. Everybody get into position. Ooh. Yeah. And then this is what happened. Do we do it? Do we go down? They're, they're struggling, I think. This is ridiculous. Get him. Why isn't my guy attacking them? Why won't he do anything? I'm out of arrows! Ah! This is silly. This is bad. That's it? That's all you guys got? Oh my god. Yeah, the AI is bad. The enemies, especially the human ones, are so stupid. And they say... <laughs> yeah, when you, when you kill them, it sounds like they're drowning. They go... <laughs> and hands down, my least favorite part was the traversal. I don't know if it was the thick thighs or what, but I could not get that little lady around town barely at all. And you're just desperate for that flying mount mm -hmm. because you just don't want to walk anymore. We went into the world settings and just made it infinite stamina because I don't want to be sitting there watching a wheel go like this before I can craft the saddle that I already collected 10,000 oh, resources for. And that's I just want to be out catching Pokemon and befriending them and bonding with them. And all of that in between just feels like such a chore. However, the aspects of the game that aren't that are still fun enough that you don't mind that much doing the grind. I Shelby, mind. Shelby mind. I mind, yeah. Whether or not you are more like Shelby or more like me, I think we can all agree that as a community of pocket monster fans. At the very least, what Pal World did is send a message yeah. to Nintendo that, <laughs> what have you been waiting for? And I think that's a pretty good place to wrap it up, put a little bow on it. So. Yeah, I think that that was a nice, uh, <laughs> I don't know, okay. Shut up, keep talking. In conclusion, Pal World 
hits the spot, but it also hits the spots that don't feel so good. It's like two in the pink, one in the stink. And on that note, I would like to transition over to our sponsor because one of my least favorite things to do in Pal World was cooking. Thank goodness I have Cook Unity to help oh! me out with that. Damn, are you Linus Tech Tips? Yes, I am. I'm exhausted after last year, so this year I want to eat better. But actually, I don't want to cook. Thanks to Cook Unity, I don't have to. Cook Unity is the first chef to you meal delivery service. Eating meals from Cook Unity brings a diverse group of talented chefs right into my home. I already feel like they're my family. These delicious meals are made fresh every day in regional micro kitchens, not big, scary industrial warehouses. Cook Unity is all about flexibility. Pause, cancel, or change your plan anytime and choose from a variety of meals with over seven different dietary preference filters, including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free options. Meals are delivered fully cooked, so all you have to do is heat them up. No more cleanup and meal planning. I loved this adobo flank steak by Chef Inat Admoni in New York City, and the rustic-style French beef ragu by Chef Cedric Nicholas right here in LA was better than any pasta I have ever made. I love how easy it's been to have a quick meal that feels substantial and real, and I think you will too. So if you'd like to try out some scrumptious cuisine this year, go to cookunity.com slash GFR50 or click the link in the description and use our code GFR50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out for yourself. Thank you so much to Cook Unity for sponsoring and thank you guys for watching. We hope you're having a great beginning of the year. I did it. I made us a roof with a house. Am no. I helping? I don't know. I can't. You're not doing anything as far as I can see. Oh, now I got to get more wood so I can build something. You can't see me? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> You look like a pal, a Pokemon. I'm helping. I'm helping to catch you. I'm helping.